What is good, YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new video. We're back here today on NBA 2K24 once again, as today we're going to be rebuilding the Minnesota Timberwolves. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. We're currently on the road to 40,000 subs right now. We're trying to reach that goal before this year is over. So if not hit that sub button, want to help us reach that goal, that would be greatly appreciated. But let's go ahead and talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves, because as you guys can see, we're rebuilding them today. So... The main thing is, is, of course, Anthony Edwards. He's the star of the show, absolute stud, one of my favorite players entertaining uh, and on and off the court. Now, the other thing that is a big elephant in the room is the Cat and Gobert experiment. Obviously, as we know, the Timberwolves, they gave up a ton to get Rudy Gobert, and we didn't really get to see a large sample size of the, of the Cat and Gobert experiment, which is why the team is running it, up, uh, running it back again. And they didn't freak out and trade Cat like a lot of the rumors were saying that they were trying to trade Carnegie Towns, which it never ended up happening, obviously. And it sounds like they're going to be running it back with Cat and Gobert. And hopefully they get a larger sample size and they'll evaluate from there on what they're going to do going forward, whether these two work together or if they don't. And then we'll see what they do from there. But other than that, obviously you have like McDaniels, Mike Conley, Nas Reed. So it's still a very solid roster nonetheless in Minnesota. There was a lot of hype on this team last year. Uh, the hype, of course, has died down a little bit. Now we just kind of want to see if this team can be what we expected them to be potentially last year. Now, I went as far as to say I thought this team would be like the first seed in the regular season last year. I said that, which just sounds so stupid looking back at it. I like really believed in that idea of Gobert and Cat together. Again, we didn't get to see like, a, see like a large sample size of it, but that was just so dumb. I don't even know why I ever said that. Regardless, though, we're going to sum year number one. By the way, injuries are back on. I listened to the poll that I posted yesterday. Most of you guys want to see them continue to be on. I did lower like the tendencies of everything a little bit. So that should, you know, obviously take away from that just a little bit. Injuries won't be as prevalent, uh, but they'll still be here, of course. So uh, that makes it more realistic, which is what all, what we're all about on this channel for the most part. So I'm going to go ahead, though, and send Leonard Miller and Josh Minn out to the G League. Other than that, we're going to simulate this season and we're going to see how this Timberwolf squad does for year number one. And we'll evaluate on how this team does from there. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that allows you to choose the overs or unders on the players you love watching. It's available on mobile or desktop. If we turn over to the left monitor here, they pretty much have every sport you can imagine. They have esports, MMA, NFL, and of course, basketball will be back soon as well. But basically, you choose any stat that you want. You can choose between two to six players, and you're going to go the over or the under. It's that simple. You don't have to play anybody else. It's just you against the projections. Right now, Price Picks is going to match your deposit dollar for dollar. If you use that link down in the description below, use code CRUSHABLES. Matching your deposit up to $100. Thank you, Prize Picks, for sponsoring today's video. Also, as I told you guys in the last one, a tool that I'm using this year on my Prize Picks is I'm using DGF's Fantasies Optimizer. They basically do the math for you. They go ahead and give you the percentage chance that this uh, prop can hit for you if you're going to win or not. And it's just profitable long term. So this is a tool I'm using. If you want to go ahead and use this tool as well, uh, link to that tool is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES to sign up there. Thank you guys so much to Bryce Picks and DGF for sponsoring today's video. So at the end of year one, Giannis wins MVP. Vic wins Rookie of the Year as usual. Six man goes to Chris Ball as usual. Nick Lax, defensive player. Paul Reed, most improved. Steph, clutch player of the year. And Steve Kerr is your coach of the year. So here's your NBA first team. I can't imagine we have any Timberwolves representatives. Anthony Edwards may be here, but maybe next year he will be. All defensive first team and all defensive second team. So no Rugo Bear or anything like that. But one thing I will say is the regular season actually went really well for us. So it looks like the Cat Go Bear experiment seemed to work out, at least in 2K's eyes. So 27 from Anthony Edwards, 22 from Cat, 15 off the bench from Nas Reed, 12 from Conley, 11 from Go Bear with 12 rebounds, 10 and a half from McDaniels, 8 from Shake Milton, and 8 from Kyle Anderson. Now, obviously, we want to see how this is going to translate to the playoffs. We get to play a contender in the Los Angeles Clippers who do have a healthy Paul George and Kawhi going into things. So this could be a tough series, of course. We'll see how this goes going game by game here. Game one, we're going to go down 1-0, 124-103. to 103. Game two, we are going to drop both games at home. That's not a great sign for us, but we do win game three in their house, and we are going to win game four in their house as well. So just like that, we're back to being at home court. They want to give more minutes to Anthony Edwards, which I obviously... I'm all about, so let's go ahead and do it, even though I just did, didn't do it. So there we go. More minutes for Anthony Edwards. I'm fine with it. Can we win this game five and get to round two in this very first season? That would give me a very glimmer of hope about Cat and Gobert going forward. And it looks like we're absolutely going to blow them out for this game five. They made it somewhat interesting. No, they didn't. No one might talk about it. They didn't even make it interesting. Edwards, 44. Now, can we beat them in six? No, we're going to a game seven. 
back in Minnesota. Now, Kyle Anderson does get hurt. Let's see if we can still win without him regardless. Uh, he might even still be playing through the injury, but can we win this one? Got a relatively close game. The Clippers had the lead like the whole game. We're down seven with six minutes left. There is a chance we could close this gap and uh, take the lead, but it may not go that way. It's looking like the Clippers are going to edge us out here. And yeah, we're going to lose game seven. It is great that we got to a game seven with a team like the Clippers. I don't think I'll overreact and trade Cat or Gobert. Now, Gobert, the only reason I would trade him is if the overall, I'm scared of that going down, which is definitely still something that could happen in theory. So that might be something we look out for. But the Celtics are going to beat the Suns eight six games. But year number one, it goes pretty well. Things went really well. We're going to override LeBron James retirement because uh, I noticed I never do and I probably should start doing it. But draft lottery time, let's go ahead and see. Do we even own a draft pick this offseason? I'm pretty sure we don't. Actually, I guess we do. We have the 23rd overall pick. So, I mean, we're a team that's trying to contend right now. So, I don't know if bringing another rookie in makes sense. We have Leonard Miller, Minot, and Wendell Moore already. That's kind of our young pieces. I don't think there's any reason to fire Chris Finch at this point after getting to the first round, taking the Clippers to seven. Sucks we didn't beat them, but I'm not going to fire him after that. So, we'll keep him around. And I think we're going to go ahead and try to see if we can cash in this 23rd overall pick for something different on draft night. Maybe a point guard replacement because... Did Mike Conda retire? Because I wasn't even paying attention if he did or not. And he may have on us. And I guess the easier way to do this is see if he's still here. He is still here. So he has not retired. So we could keep him and resign him if we wanted to. But I think I would rather have a replacement to Mike Conley. So we'll see if maybe that exists out there with this 23rd overall pick. Probably not, but we can give it a shot. So I actually have a couple of interesting trades here for this 23rd overall pick. We have the Pelicans offering Jordan Hawkins, who didn't do anything for them in year one. He didn't even play for them. So... Could be interesting to bring him in here. I don't know how much he'll develop. I haven't really even paid attention to his development in 2K24. I imagine it could go up pretty nicely, but that wouldn't be terrible. Another idea that I kind of liked, it was somewhere here, and that was Gabe Vincent. We can get Gabe Vincent and also 2025 first from the Los Angeles Lakers. So they're going to walk over the 23rd overall pick. Maybe there's a rookie they absolutely love. They get off Gabe Vincent's contract. Shake Milton and Cal Alexander Walker are still two really good additions for them. Gabe Vincent just shot 6.35% shooting. I'm mainly doing it for this first round pick in the future that actually has two-star trade value right now. But I think we're going to go ahead and do this trade. We're going to send 23rd mil and Alexander Walker for Gabe Vincent in a 2025 pick from the Lakers. I feel really good about that trade we just did. Now, obviously, we don't have a draft pick on draft night here, which sucks. But Gabe Vincent could be the point guard uh, starter next year, especially if Conley is someone we're not bringing back, which I don't know if I will. Jamie Daniels is a must resign. Obviously, we're going to bring him back. We definitely have to get a point guard that raises our ceiling. And I don't know if we just got that and gave Vincent. I probably would much rather him come off the bench in this scenario. Uh, we still need Jamie Daniels back. And uh, obviously, Gobert and Nas Reed are still here as well. Um, but McDaniel is going to be a must resign. Gabe Vincent for now could be our starting point guard. But I also wouldn't mind maybe uh, shaking things up and having him start as well if we need to. Uh, I don't think I'm re signing Mike Conley. I guess we could, in theory, sign like a. Monte Morris, so I think would actually fit perfectly as a starting point guard for what we need right now. We don't need someone who's going to score a ton. Just somebody that's going to just be a contributor here. He's a lot younger than Conley, so I don't hate it. Tyus Jones is always one of my favorite guys for that scenario. Lonzo Ball, I would also love to get, but I highly doubt we could even get close to getting him. I'll offer it to him. He's not going to accept that. Lonzo Ball would be a dream scenario. How much is Tyus Jones asking for if he's even here? I don't even know if he's a free agent. He is. He's asking for $12 million. Tyus Jones would be much better than Monte Morris. We're actually really close to being able to get him, and I think I'm going to go for Tyus Jones. So, Tyus Jones, we are going to renounce Mike Conley to do this, but Tyus Jones as our starting point guard sounds fantastic to me. We're not going to renounce Slow Mo, but we are going to renounce Mike Conley, and then we're also going to go ahead and re sign Jamie Daniel. So, we get Tyus Jones, former Timberwolf, who I think fits perfectly for what we're looking for. So, McDaniels is a back, and then I think we also re sign Slow Mo. No brainer there. Although, you know, Cat, or not Cat, Go Bear and Slow Mo had their issues. Although we could also resign Mike Conley, it looks like still. You know what? I'm going to do it. Can never have enough mentors here. Plus that salary that we could use in a trade later on. So we're going to bring back Mike Conley as well. And now we have a big log jam at point guard, which is fine. We could find a way to flip it and use it later on to our advantage. Uh, and we have a next another guard spot. So in theory, one of these guys can play some backup guard minutes. So that's fine. Troy Brown, Wendell Moore. I don't know if any of these guys are ready to play the three spot. Don't love that. Slow-mo, and then, uh, yeah, so the center center rotation is still looking good. So I think we're going to try to trade for a backup three, but other than that, we should be ready for next season. So we won't be trading for a backup three. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and sign Sam Hauser in free agency just as another small four for depth, just in case. Let's go to player progression now and see what we're looking at. So Luca Garza is coming back. 
Gobert is starting to regress, which is what I was afraid of. Garza is up to a 74. Troy Brown, and then you got Wendell Moore and Leonard Miller also going up. Je Josh Minot didn't move whatsoever, so that's something I'll have to take note of. But Gobert going down sucks. Edwards going up four overall is a great sign. And then McDaniels, Tyus Jones, of course, we just brought in. But I feel really good about having Tyus Jones. I have a feeling this year we might have to move Gobert to deadline. It's a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if things don't start to click this year with Gobert regressing, I think he's on the last year of his deal as well, if I'm not mistaken. So it would make a ton of sense to go ahead and trade him. He might have another player option. I'll, I'll have to double check. Maybe it is his last year or does he have another year? Hold on. So Cat is going to have, I guess, one year left on his contract. Just kidding, as a player option next year. So he does have an option next year. But Conley, Edwards, I still want to start Mike Conley. I don't know if I want to start Mike Conley. I think I'd rather start Tyus Jones. I think Mike Conley is someone we're easily trading at the deadline, though, 100%. Seven seconds lands us at a four-star system. You know what? If they want to start Conley to start things off, that's fine. He'll be moved at the deadline 1,000% uh, for something good, hopefully. But I'll see you guys how with how the season's going. And most likely with the big trade, the deadline, using that Lakers pick some of the other future picks we still have left so we're at the trade deadline right now and i noticed something very interesting lonzo ball is on the orlando magic they have a plethora of guards i kind of mentioned the idea of wanting lonzo ball on this team he's only making seven million dollars which is absolutely insane that i could have maybe signed him for that much money honestly i could see a world where that actually happens especially if lonzo ball for some reason declines his player option which i highly doubt he would with the injuries he's dealing with but if he did in theory and sign like a prove it $8 million contract. I can see a role where that happens. Now, obviously, I think bringing Lonzo Ball in here would be absolutely amazing. I love the point guards we have, but Lonzo Ball is a massive upgrade from what we have at the moment. So he is definitely a target at the moment for us if we can get him. Halliburton, of course, is a dream, but that's definitely going to be way too hard to get to go. Uh, so we are going to go talk to the Orlando Magic about Lonzo Ball. Right now, we're actually 30 and 20, so not too bad. But Lonzo Ball, in my opinion, would be a ceiling raiser. He just would. So let's go talk to uh, the Magic about him. So uh, right now, he's making, as I said, like $8 million. And he's averaging 11 and 6. So he's not doing anything too crazy. But he is an 85 overall. And he'd be a perfect fit in my eyes next to Anthony Edwards. Now, again, I want to try to trade Mike Conley to, for this trade. This Lakers pick has two-star trade value. So like an expiring contract... They get Lonzo. I'm I'm cool with doing this. Let's see what they say to that. They don't agree to it. That's fair. I will also give you Josh Minot, who probably doesn't have a ton of trade value. I'll throw a couple seconds in here, which actually that second has pretty good value, which is pretty wild. Uh, but they're not going to agree to that. Okay, so we're going to have to um, maybe get more creative here. So not Luka Garza. Maybe Wendell Moore has some trade value to them, and then they can give me... Uh, I don't know if they have anything. they can get. Like Caleb Houston, I don't think that moves anything for them. So... Do we tr I mean, we throw a 2029 first in here for Alonzo. I'm cool with it. I'll throw my second. That has some value. We get Alonzo Ball. So we give two first round picks and a second, but we got Alonzo Ball on the team. We give up Mike Conley to do so. Now, Gabe Vincent becomes kind of redundant here now, in my opinion, with Alonzo Ball coming over, because if there's a point guard I'm keeping off the bench, it's 1,000% Tyus Jones. But Alonzo Ball, in my opinion, is the best ceiling raiser we could have gotten. I love Gabe Vincent, though, so it's not like I'm trying to move him intentionally, but with Tyus Jones and uh, also Lonzo, Gabe Vincent becomes, as I said, redundant. So if we can move him for something different, I think we go ahead and do so. I'm not looking to get another point guard. Kersever being offered to me is interesting. We do have a center already, Capella. That's pretty interesting. Nick Richards, Clarkson, and we trade a first. I'm not trading another first, though. I don't want to have to trade another first. DiVincenzo, I like the idea of we trade Wendell Moore. We get DiVincenzo. The Knicks get, uh, yeah, I like Dante DiVincenzo as a contributor. Um, do we do that trade? That's the that's the winner for me right now. Grant Williams, KCP, trade exception. Uh, Obi Toppin, wouldn't hate that as well. Uh, what do we need the most off the bench? Because right now we have a backup point guard, we have a backup power forward, and then we have a backup center. So, I mean, we could, in theory, get a small forward point guard or shoot, or not point guard, small forward or shooting guard. So we need a wing, which we've been offered with either Levert and then also got offered uh, Grant Williams or KCP or even Obi Toppin. So I actually like a lot of these offers, but I think we're going to go ahead. We're going to settle. Levert's interesting. Nine points per game. He's pretty terrible this year, though. So I don't know if I want to move for him. DiVincenzo Clarkson. I wouldn't want to, I don't want him to trade it first, though. I think I'm cool with DiVincenzo. We're going Dante DiVincenzo here. Gabe Vincent for Dante DiVincenzo. And that is what our rotation is going to look like for the rest of the season. Davi DiVincenzo is the last spot off the bench. We bring in Lonzo Ball. So. We're looking to go win a championship this year. Are the moves that we just did going to help us with that? We shall see. Hopefully it works out.
At the end of year two, John Morant wins MVP. Collier is your rookie of the year. Scoot's six men on the Blazer, AZ defensive player. Brandon Miller, most improved. And Shea is your clutch player of the year with Bickerstaff, coach of the year. So here's your NBA first team. Anthony Edwards does make it this year, which I figured would be the case. He averages 33 points per game, 27 last year. Makes a massive jump, which is great. All defense first team and all defensive second team. So we are the second seed in the West. Things went really well again for us this year. Obviously, we have aspirations of getting out of round one this time around, though. I think we have a good enough roster to do so. So hopefully it ends up working out for us. Rotationally, everyone is healthy as well. So we have a really good chance, in my opinion, to get out of round one and potentially make a deep run here. So we get the Rockets in round one. Uh, so they have Kevin Porter Jr., who is obviously uh, the headline of news right now. What an absolute terrible human from what we've seen as reports. Uh, Jalen Green, Cameron Whitmore, Jabari Smith, Shun Goon, Tari Eason, Amon Thompson, Adamara, Dylan Brooks, and Jock Landale. Similar in current round from the or against the Rockets, and we are going to sweep them. So we take care of them, which is great. And now we run into the Golden State Warriors. So the Warriors, of course, they're a different animal. They're a team with a ton of championship experience. So we got a tough task in front of us, but... I think we could be up for it. So let's go ahead. Oh, Gobert. Uh, no, they're starting Nas Reed right now, which I find very interesting. I don't know if I love that, but Gobert is going to start again. I think that I think that's for the best. So game one, we're down to one to zero. Game two, wow, we lose both at home. We're down three to zero to a championship experience team, it looks like. Uh, but we do win game four, so maybe we're not done just yet. Kyle Anderson does get hurt for this game five. Maybe there's a world where we come back from three to zero. <laughs> there's definitely chances of it happening. I've done it before, I believe. So let's see if we can. All right, so win game five. So all we have to do is win game six and things become rather interesting. So they actually uh, want to start Nas Reed again. I guess if that's what the answer is, we'll do it. Let's see if we can win game six and force a game seven back to Minnesota. That'd be fantastic. Very close game six. Can we do it? It's not looking like it. We are going to lose 115 and 127. So unfortunately for us we get to round two this year i guess we take a step we went from round one getting beat and we take a step into round two cavaliers going to win the championship uh this offseason we're not gonna have a draft pick i'm pretty sure lebron james retires a clipper which is very weird but it happened minnesota's pick i believe yeah it's gonna go to the jazz from the go bear trade of course or yeah the go bear trade i don't think i fire chris finch i still like what we're doing we're still getting uh you know into the playoffs Kind of ran into the Warriors. That was tough. And uh, now we just need to make sure we're geared up and ready to go contend next year. That's kind of where we're at. So let's just fill this out. Got that completely filled out. And let's head past draft night to player options. And let's make sure we're ready for next year. So player options, go bear accepting. Nasri is going to decline. Josh Minot, I'm going to accept. And then qualifying offers, Tim Hauser and Luca Garza. I'm not worried about them. But hey, if they come back, that's fine. Uh, Lonzo Ball is a free agent. Obviously, we give up a lot to get him. I'm hoping we can re-sign him. But it's not looking like we're going to be able to, which, yeah, that sucks. But I think it was worth it. I don't care that we traded two first to get him. I think it was worth it still. I'm re-signing Nas Reed, though, because we can't just let him walk for nothing. That'd be kind of disastrous. So Nas Reed, we're bringing back. I still want Lonzo Ball back, but the odds of us getting him back seem very slim. He has five offers right now. Now, he doesn't have any good offers yet. What is the most I can offer him? 9.42 million. I'm going to wait. I'll see if I can have a chance of getting him back. Obviously, he is my dream scenario. I'm bringing someone back. Uh, so I'm willing to wait the course to see if I can get lucky. He has seven offers. All right. So he's starting to get a decent offer from the Nets. Lonzo, uh, I still can only offer like 9.42 million, unfortunately. I just got to make sure he's not getting any great offers. And then we can maybe be in the driver's seat. So let's just keep going. Let's go to day five. If he's gone, then he's gone. 10 offers. Okay, so the offers are the same. So he's not getting a great offer by any means. If not, we can sign one of the guys left available. But we're trying to bank on bringing Lonzo Ball back, which is what we're kind of just hoping for at this point. So let's just keep going. His value is going down and going down. I don't even know if I still will be able to get him. He might have actually signed somewhere. Do I see his name anymore? He signed. Lonzo Ball is going to sign somewhere. That sucks. Unfortunate. We gave up some assets to get him. We still have Tyus Jones. We went for it. It didn't work out. I think losing him is going to be... Pretty tough in the long run. But now that we have Rudy Gobert on an expiring contract, maybe we turn our attention to trading him away. I think that's where we got to do things. I think we trade Rudy Gobert. That's the best way I think we can get better at this moment. Levert, KCP, Karasavert, or, or Luke Kennard. We can sign one of those guys. We might do that. But I think we turn our attention to a Gobert trade. That's the way we can use his salary to get a couple guys in here and see if it works out for us. So as far as Gobert trades are concerned, there's really nothing out there that makes any sense. So Gobert is here to stay, it looks like. Um, we do need a good backup point guard, backup small forward. We didn't get Lonzo Ball back, unfortunately. So 
We're either signing Levert, Luke Kennard, or we could sign Jalen McDaniels' brother and Jalen McDaniels. So let's go ahead and get Jalen McDaniels on the team. I'll offer him as much as I can. So McDaniels will bring back and then, or bring in, sorry, not bringing him back. And then I'm also going to sign like Devonta Graham. So losing Lonzo is the worst thing we could have done. I knew that was going to be a chance for us to trade for him at the deadline, but I wanted to go for it. It didn't work out. It, it happens, but uh, we wanted to try. Gobert is still someone I might move at the deadline. He still has a very big expiring contract. Unfortunately, we don't really have many assets as far as picks are concerned to match or to attach with them. So with no Lonzo, things can still go well. We still had a good record without him last year, uh, but with him, we were probably much better. But we're going to go ahead some way this season, and if uh, there is a chance to trade Gobert at the deadline and it's going to make us contender, you bet we're going to do it. So rotationally, Park is going to land us at 12. We have Tyus Jones, Edwards, Medinos, Cat, Gobert, Nasri, DiVincenzo, Kyle Anderson, and then uh, Jalen Medinos. And Leonard Miller is almost ready to step up as well. Especially if injuries happen, he will be playing. Proficiency is still a four-star value. So I will see you guys most likely at the trade deadline because I think we are one move away from being true contenders. So right now, we are not at the trade deadline just yet, but we're 23 and 24 in the season, and it is time to sell Rudy Gobert. And I actually have a few interesting offers. The first one... It's very tempting. The Knicks want to trade me Jalen Brunson for Gobert in a first. Obviously, that feels very just outlandish and unrealistic, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, D'Lo and Rui Hachimura, this popped up in the offseason, uh, but we didn't do it. It just wasn't. I mean, Russell back to Minnesota is weird. McCollum, Joe Val doesn't excite me. James Harden is interesting. We could bring in James Harden, but we do have Tyus Jones right now who I do like. The trade that I like the most is going to be the last one, and it is Siakam and Boucher from the Toronto or from the Washington Wizards. Now, I have no idea why the Wizards have Pascal Siakam, but we could bring in Siakam and he could play next to Carly Towns for the rest of the season and have Chris Boucher also as a de bench depth. Now, we do have to give up a first round pick. At this point, we're trying to contend. I don't even care. We're going to go ahead and do this trade. I think we need to change things up. We get a five overall upgrade plus a depth spot. I think that's great. So we're doing that trade. 23 and 24 on the season. I think Cat goes up at center as well. He actually stays the same, unfortunately, but that's all good. So now rotation is going to look like this. Tyus Jones, Edwards, McDaniels, Diakam brought into Minnesota with Carthy Towns, Nasri, DiVincenzo, Boucher, Kyle Anderson, and then Joe McDaniels and Leonard Miller if we need them for spot. Minutes of injuries do occur. So that is the big trade we're making. We're hoping that fixes all of our, uh, all of our problems. I don't know if it will. Edwards, we need you to step it up, man. Uh, even though you're averaging 34, so not much else you can do. Dash Jones averaging 14 and 6, so not too bad from him. But yeah, hopefully with Cat coming in or with Siakam coming in and Cat moves down to the five, things can go well. I guess if we aren't winning for the next couple weeks, we still have the deadline in front of us. So maybe we trade Cat as well. Don't really want to, but we'll see. At the end of year three, Nikola Jokic wins MVP. Cooper Flag, rookie of the year on the Pelicans. Lucky them. Dame six man, Evan Moba defensive player. Amon Thompson, most improved, and Kyrie Irving is your clutch player of the year. I will say right now, even though we don't have the assets for it, Amon Thompson would be a great get if we could get him as well. Most likely is never going to happen. Kyrie, Kyrie Irving on the Bucks, though, clutch player, and uh, that's pretty interesting. I wonder if they have Giannis. No, Giannis went to Utah. Okay, so uh, All-NBA first team. Edwards still making All-NBA second team, which is great. And then uh, Edwards makes All-Defense first team as well, which is huge. So... We are the fourth seed in the West, so we're still here. Um, we are not like the second seed or anything, but we're hoping with the trades we made and everything we've done to this point that we can go out there and win this championship this season. So we get the Rockets in round one. No easy task. We were able to beat them last year, though, pretty easily. They do have Mara here. I don't know if they had him last year. I don't remember. But somebody current round against them again. And uh, wow, Edwards goes out. That could be all she wrote for us. Okay. Game six, Chris Boucher's back. All right, so we win. We're actually on the second round, even without Anthony Edwards, Chris Boucher. What about Edwards? Was he playing through it? He was playing through it. So he's day-to-day -day now, which is great. So Anthony Edwards was playing through it, so we were fine. So I thought he was out, and I thought we were going to be screwed. But we won. So now we play the Thunder in round two. They have Shea, Giddy, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, Chet, Casey Wallace, DJ Wagner, Tata Washington, Ojemon Dang, and Aaron Bradshaw. This one is going to be a tough series. Edwards is fully healthy. We're down 1-0. Game two, we're down two to zero. So it's not looking good for us if we want any chance. Although we could win game three and game four and we're right back in the series. Let's see what happens. We got to take both games at home for that to happen. Close game. And we are going to wrap this one up with a victory. So 103, 124, Anthony Edwards with 44. Game four, if we can win this one, then we're right back in the series. That would be absolutely phenomenal. Close game, relatively, again, we do have a nice little lead, but they might cut it at the end very uh, soon, which they don't. 
104 to 133. Simcast seems to be working so far. We've won two straight. But now we head back to Oklahoma City. So this could be a different a different story now. So here we go. They're going to have the lead here. And uh, we got to cut it down if we want any chance. It's not looking like we're going to. We are going to get beat in six by the Thunder. We can go back home. Maybe force a game seven. Uh, but Oklahoma City had the uh, lead for a second. We take it back. They take it back. We take it back. Close back and forth game. As close as it can be. We're going to slow this down at the end. 111, 113, 113. Wow, close game down the stretch. 117, 117. 119, 119. Uh, do I jump in at the end of this? I think we do. 121 and 119. A minute 30 left on the clock. All I got to do is come in here and try to win us the game. That's easier said than done, obviously. Uh, but right now, we have no Edwards on the... Or no, he's over there in the bottom. That's great. So, uh, give me Anthony Edwards, please. I want to give him the ball. So, let's make sure we're running this office for Anthony Edwards. We got 17 seconds left on the shot clock. All we got to do is tie the game up. So, that's easier said than done. But I'm just going to go ahead and go to Anthony Edwards for the dunk. 121 to 121. Needed that in the worst way possible on Chet Holmgren, who's a good shot blocker. So, great start into this one. All right. We got to get a stop now and get back on offense. So, Shea is going to have the ball. I'm going to off-ball the computer. And by the way, I believe this is on Hall of Fame, so bear with me. Shea is going to miss that. Wow, we got really lucky. So, we're going to pass it to Tyus Jones, who actually might... Oh, I was about to say is Edward's going to get open in the corner. I'm going to reset. Let's go screen and roll. Let's actually have Cat fade. Let's see if we can get him open. He's going to be wide open, and we are going to mess up the release. We're going to mess up the release. That's fine. I didn't know his release, so uh, I'm not too upset with myself. We needed that, though. That was a wide open shot. Uh, for some reason, Jalen Williams is wide open, but we recover somehow. Chet Holmgren actually steps out, I believe, right? No, why? We fouled him? Wow. Okay, that's unfortunate. Chet's going to go to the free throw line. How did I foul him? I don't even think I clicked the button. Is Luka Garza really playing right now? I think I accidentally clicked uh, sub Luka Garza in, which I don't want at all. Uh, but we need to go through Anthony Edwards. Man, we had a nice recovery there. I actually think I just have a wide open layup again. Wow, 123 to 123. It helps to have Anthony Edwards. We needed that in the worst way possible. So let's go get back on defense. Not having cash sucks. Man, if I could have hit that three, that would have been big time. Absolutely would have been big time. Thankfully, we do have McDaniels out here for some defense. Um, let's go see. Shea or Josh Giddy is going to get the ball. We're going to guard Lou Dort. Edwards is going to be on Josh Giddy. All defensive Anthony Edwards. So I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to off ball the computer. No shame. Giddy. Trying to take Edwards down. He's going to go to Chet. Chet's going to shoot over Nas Reed and hit it. 28 seconds left on the clock. All right. We're going to go to Anthony Edwards once again. No point in not doing that. So we might actually have Nas Reed fade. Let's see if this is going to work out for us. He's going to be open again. Actually, they uh, switch on really nicely. I'm going to go to Siakam here. Don't like where this is going so far. Let's give it to Edwards. Anthony Edwards, bail me out, please. You know what? We're going to shoot a step back three. And we're going to hit it, bro. I'm him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I needed that. <laughs> uh, don't ask me to ever do that again because there's a good chance I'm never doing what I just did again. That was insane. But we did it nonetheless. Six, six seconds left in clocks. So we are far from done. Wow. Uh, Shea was left wide open. So literally does not matter what I just did. Um, not sure what just happened there. Okay. <laughs> Wow, after I did that and we okay. I, I think I have to go. I think I have to go for the oh, we don't have three seconds though. I don't have a ton of time. Um, just give me I'm going straight to Anthony Ed. <sighs> We're gonna lose game six. Ah, that's tough. That's tough, man. Uh close game. We lose though, unfortunately. We we're going to lose this one, but we're gonna go another season. Damn, man. I had such a great shot with Edwards and Shea had to ruin it. So the Thunder did go on and win the championship. No surprise there. Let's get into this last offseason and see if there's anything we can do to change this roster. I don't really think there's going to be. I think we're kind of locked in. We might just have to run it back, unfortunately. We could get like a new head coach and maybe that saves everything. I'm going to go for Tyron Lue. I'm going to go for Quinn Snyder. Let's try to go for all the good head coaches and see if that makes any difference at all. Adrian Griffin, we could go for, but I'm going to go for Nick Nurse as well. We could bring him in to Minnesota. I'm going to go for Quinn Snyder if I can find his name again, and uh, we'll look for him. And then those are the three offers we're going to make, and hopefully we can get at least one of them. So Quinn Snyder, going to offer on him. So let's see. We do get Quinn Snyder. That's going to be great. So Snyder's going to be our head coach. I think that's pretty solid. Uh, we could have Gobert here, and that would be his former head coach, but it's fine. Uh, and then big man coach, we're going to grab. Let's see if there's anybody else. And there is, there we go, Evan Turner, or Elston Turner, not Evan Turner, but 
We're going to sign Ellison Turner. I don't even care about the draft. We're going straight to player options. Leonard Miller might be ready to contribute this year as well. We're going to accept that, of course. Qualifying offers, nothing. Luka Garza, don't care. Free agency, let's see. Luka's a free agent. Slow Mo's a free agent. So is Josh Minna. All right. So what do we need? Let's see. We have Tyus Jones. We have Anthony Edwards, DiVincenzo. Daniels, McDaniels. We have Siakam, Chris Boucher, Leonard Miller. And then we have Carthy Towns, Nas Reed. So we need a backup point guard for the most part. So we had Devontae Graham last year. We have Midget here now. We have Landry Shamit. We have Cameron Reddish. We have Kyle Anderson. We have Mo Wagner. So nothing really that we can get here. Do I just go ahead and make a trade with like Boucher maybe? I don't know. We can trade Boucher and see if I get a fur, get a point guard maybe. Luke Kennard's offered, uh, Kennard's offered to me. Delano Banton. We'll do it. Delano Banton's going to be our new point guard. And then I'll sign Slow Mo back and that will be our offseason. So we're just simply running it back with kind of the same roster. So I will see you guys at the end of year number four. I still hate that I could not close that game six out against the Thunder with that shot with Anthony Edwards, but hey, it is what it is. I'm just happy I even hit that shot. That felt so good. But uh, rotationally, we're about to look good. Leonard Miller is uh, only up to 76. He may not play, but whatever. I'll see you guys at the end of year four. So final season here, we get the first seed in the Western Conference. Here are your player stats. Anthony Edwards led the way with 29. Siakam was 17. 17 from Cat. 14 from Nas Reed, 10 from Tyus Jones, 9 from Banton, 8 from Leonard Miller, and 7. So Leonard Miller did get to play this year, which is great. He played 81 games. So I love that Leonard Miller contributed here at the very end. Now, can we go win a championship is the question. We get to play the Lakers, who no longer have LeBron James. So I'm assuming we take care of them. Let's just simply come around and hope for the best here. We're going to sweep them. So we got them done. And we play the Rockets again, who we've swept like every year. And this year, they might get revenge on us. So, bro, I felt so confident. I was like, oh, we've beaten them every year. Oh, Siakam's hurt. Uh, is there anybody else that's hurt? Uh, Delano Benson's hurt. McDaniels is cold right now. So uh, Jalen McDaniels is. All right. Well, we're down three to one to the Rockets. So I thought I was on top of the world for a second. We just got done sweeping the Lakers. Like, okay, we beat the Rockets twice. Now we can beat them again. We're down three to one. Okay, there's a world where we can come back, maybe. So I'm not going to rule that out. Uh, but we are going to win this one, one of three to one fourteen. So all we got to do is win game six, and we're going to a game seven back in Minnesota. It's that simple. Now, can we do it, though? They're going to have a nice lead here. We could cut it if we okay we do now can we take it no they're gonna run away with it so in this final season we're gonna fall short to the rockets in this last one man wow so the last three videos we have not been able to get a championship uh for i mean this today it felt like i was really close the last two videos i've had like no luck at all but this one it, it was there but it wasn't at the same time so the rockets end up beating us we lose in six. Unfortunately, the Rockets got too OP. I thought we were about to beat them and you know easily, and that was not the case at all. Round two. We didn't even get to the conference finals today. I still feel really good about the team we uh, put together. Unfortunately, it just didn't come together at the end of things. But I hope you guys enjoyed regardless. Uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'll see y'all in the next video. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.